booleans. Alright, so now it's time for us to look at our first value type, which is known as a boolean. Firstly, let's update our version to 0.8.18, which is the latest compiler that I can use, just so that we have the latest available features. Now let's talk about booleans. We can use booleans whenever we want to work with values that's either true or false. We can use a boolean in the form of a variable. So let's start off by typing. Firstly, we need to define the type of data. In our case, this is going to be a boolean, and we specify this by writing bool. Now we get to the variable's name. Names of variables are normally written in camel case. This is a convention where the first word, let's start by writing test, the first word's first letter is lowercase. And then every word that follows starts with a capital letter. In my case, I'm going to call this boolean test bool and a, because I'm going to create a b as well. Variable names are all up to you as long as it makes sense to you and someone else looking at the code as well, what you have called this boolean. For now, this is our test bool a, and this is known as an undeclared boolean. It is undeclared because we are not setting the initial value. Let me show you how we set the initial value on a boolean. Let's create a second boolean called test bool b and instead of just adding the semicolon, what I'm going to do is actually give it a value. Now a boolean can only be true or false. In my case, I'm going to make this true. So now this is a declared boolean. This is an undeclared boolean. We can assign values to variables like this using the assignment operator, which is specified by one equal sign. We can define or change a variable's value later in the code as well. Let me show you by writing a function. Functions will explain later in the series. However, functions are used to do operations, return values, change the state variables, and all sorts of lovely things. To create a function, we start off by writing the function keyword and then we go ahead and give it a name. This function is going to be called change bool. We then add brackets which can take parameters later on and we add curly brackets and usually open them up to form a code block. As we are typing you might notice this exclamation mark over here on the left hand side or this going red in the compiler. It means there's an error and if we hover over it we can see that there's no visibility specified for this function. So to fix this, we can simply add public over here. This helps tell the compiler who can actually access or the visibility level of this function. And in fact, if we want to even see our booleans, we need to add public to them as well. This will create an automated getter function. But let me show you that in action. Let's for now go and build out and deploy this contract. I'm going to go to the deployment section and clear the existing contract and redeploy it. Now we can see that we have the change bool function. This is it and here it is. If we click on it, nothing will happen because the code block doesn't specify any instructions for us to execute. We also notice that we can't see our test bool A and test bool B. And that is because we need to add public to them as well. So let's go and add public there and here as well. Later on, we'll talk about these visibility fields and you get more than just public. You get private, internal, external, and so on. But for now, let's make them public. Let's go and close this and redeploy it. And now we can see the test bool A and test bool B. Now, we know that test bool B we have assigned to true. So if I click it, we can see it returns down here true. But what will test bool A return? Because we haven't set a value. Let's test it. Clicking on it and we can see that it's false. The reason why it's false is because types in Solidity, by default if it's not declared, will have a default value for that type. So in the case of boolean, it would be false. We can of course set it here, but let's use our function to change this boolean to true. 
how we can do that now is simply say test pool a the assignment to true save this and now we're going to close it redeploy now if we check test pool a is false but if we say change pool and then we click on it it's now true what happened here is known as a state change because when we deploy the contract these variables in the contract will keep state and now we have changed one of them to a different value for now just understand that a boolean's value can only be true or false